Um, I wanted to welcome you to today's session on Google Groups and Google Plus. And before we get started, I have a quick question. Um, how many of you are here because you are interested in taking the Google certification? You can let me know in the chat box or you can. Um, awesome, great. Perfect. I wanted to ask that up front because I have to tell you right off the bat that these, um, the tools we're doing today, we do not use these with students in Fayette County. As a matter of fact, both of them are blocked. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that everybody in the session knew that. Um, before we begin, I want to make sure, I'm sure you already have it, um, since you guys are on the path, that you have this link, bit.ly forward slash path to GC1 because this is our slide deck of all of the information. So every um, week as we add new sessions, we just add them to the slide deck. You will even notice we have um, embedded the recordings of the videos into the slide deck as well. Everything is hyperlinked. Um, so if you click on one of these topics, then it will take you to step-by-step -step directions as well. So this is a great resource to come back to um, as you are studying. Um, we also added one brand new session today that um, we are going to hold on Thursday, and that's just a wrap up of this certification um, course, and it will give you information on how to register for the exam, um, any other resources you might need, and just answer any questions that you may have. So that will be on Thursday um, at 3.30. We just added that today, so just wanted to let you know that that is there. Okay, we'll get started. As always, if you have any questions, please um, put those down in the chat box or unmute your microphone and just ask it out loud. We're a pretty small group today, so feel free to ask. Um, so today we are looking at Google Groups and Google Plus. And to get to these, you follow the same pattern as every other Google tool. It is the name of the tool in front of google.com. So to go to groups, we would go to groups.google.com. You could also find this in the waffle. Well, at least you could find, oh, there it is. <laughs> okay, so I found groups in my waffle. Um, so I'm going to just show you how to get there, but I'm going to have to jump out of this in a second to go to a personal account. Um, so Google Groups is used to create an online group for your team, for your organization. Um, we're going to pretend we are in a perfect Google world today where it's not blocked for our students and you, um, because a lot of schools can use Google Groups with their students. Um, so you can do things like set up email distribution groups, you can host group discussions, you can collaborate on projects, you can organize meetings, you can find people with similar hobbies or interests. So um, Google Groups, um, I'm just letting you take a peek inside of my Google Groups. You can tell I'm members um, of Google Education Groups across the world. And so within these, um, I just wanted to pull one open. So for example, this is one for certified trainers. So if somebody wants to ask a question, they can ask it within this group and it goes out, um, number one, as an email to me. And number two, I can come to this board and see where everything is collected together. So for example, I can tell that seven different people have responded to this one and eight to this one and so on. So um, this reminds me of my Blackboard days in college, kind of just a, a way to communicate with each other. Um, I'm going to jump out to my personal account because you will, cannot create Google Groups within Fayette County. So I'm going to jump out and show you how to do this. If you do have a personal Gmail account, um, you could do this as well. So once I'm in groups.google.com, I would click on create group. Um, and I should have signed in first, but I'll do that now. I'm inside groups.google.com. I've signed in and now I hit create. So the very first thing I would do is give this a name. So I'm going to call this um, practice group for 
Google search. And you'll notice as I'm typing, it's going ahead and populating an email address for me. And if by any chance, um, when you're creating a group or if you're taking the exam and you were creating a group, and if it was read and said that was already taken, you would just need to keep typing something or characters um, until you get that unique address. Okay, so I have my name. It's automatically populating an account for me. Next, you would want to give your group a um, description. So maybe this is a group for those wanting to take the exam. If you were doing this with students, you could say this is a place where we will be discussing Hamlet or um, our ideas for AP literature. The next thing that you can choose is the language, so your group's primary language, and I can choose if the, which type of group this is. When I click the drop down list, you will see there are four different kinds of groups that you can choose. The first is an email list, which is what I just showed you an example of. The second would be a web forum. So this allows you to interact with each other and have interactive discussions. Um, so you can um, choose who gets to be a member of your group, and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. So people can either choose to go to the group to see all of the, dis the discussion taking place, or they can receive updates through email. If they choose to receive updates through email, they could choose do they want all of those emails every time somebody submits something, or do they want a digest maybe once a day, um, or if they want a summary of what's been sent. You can also have just a Q&A forum. Um, it has extra features, and I'll be honest, I've never got to play with this one yet, so I need to try it. Um, again, it, it works, it sounds like it works very similar to the web forum, um, where people can ask questions and submit questions and answer and help each other out. It can also be a collaborative inbox where you assign topics as well. So just note that there are four different options. The most common and the one you will need to know for level one is just the email list. You can choose permissions for your group. So um, these are pretty obvious. The first one is that anyone on the web could find that group and join it so that it would be searchable. You could also say that um, only members of the group, only people you send that link to would be able to join. So you can lock this down. And I love the idea of using this with students, how you can lock it down and keep it safe. Um, you can also do the same for topics. You can even say who can post. So maybe anybody could post to that. Obviously, um, we would not use that with students. You could say members of the group, only managers of the group or owners of the group. Um, the last option that I have in creating my group is who can join. So is it people you ask or can anyone ask to join? Okay, so this is just setting up my basic group. I've given it a name, it created an email address, um, the description, I chose the language, the type of group, and basic permissions. So when I'm ready, I hit create. And prove that I'm not a robot. Which I'm not. Okay, so now I get this notification that my group has been created. And from the screen, I can go ahead and set up my group. I can invite people to join from here, or I could customize my settings. Um, so this is the easiest way to invite people to join your, your group. So if I wanted to from here, I could just quickly start to type in um, email addresses of my students, um, and it would work with your directory. Um, again, for, for our friends who came in late, this tool we cannot use with our Fayette County students. So I had to jump out to a personal account to show you how to set this up. And I could even send them an invitation. You have been in invited to join um, our discussion group for literature. And then I can go ahead and send my invites. Okay, so that is the basics of just setting up a Google group. Again, you just come in, hit create group, and quickly invite your members and change your settings. Um, any questions so far?
I really feel bad teaching you in this way because like I said, it's not something we can use with our students. So I'm just kind of having to walk through it quickly. Um, I did want to tell you that if you do have your own personal Gmail account that you can come in and actually search for other groups that exist. Um, so let's say that you are interested in um, Royal Icing Cookies. And so I can see all of these other Google groups that have been created. Um, here's one in Ohio. Um, here's one that's in a language in a different language. So I can tell that there are different groups. So um, some of these I can tell that are private. Some of them I could click and ask to join. And so you can come in and find groups um, that with shared interests. Maybe you are a third grade math teacher or a seventh grade biology teacher. You can come in and look for other groups that you could join to share ideas and information. So that's how to use a Google group. Any questions about groups? Okay. Um, the next tool that we are going to look at today is the Google Plus community. And again, this is another tool that you cannot use with students, um, but I really still use this tool with um, myself inside of Fayette County. To get there, I would either, again, follow that format of typing the name of the tool in, in front of um, google.com, so plus.google.com, or I can also go to the waffle and access Google Plus here. Google Plus is another example of how to create a, or how to share information with others. And so from, this is my home stream, so you can quickly see posts of communities that I have joined. Um, another thing that I could do is I could discover communities. So again, I can search for um, communities that I want to share a similar interest with or to share ideas with. Um, Notice there's a little toggle switch here um, that I can click this on and off. By turning it on, it would limit this to communities um, that are only within Fayette County's domain. I want to back, give you a little bit of back history about Google+. This community, this was worldwide. It was open to anyone. Um, with a Google or a Gmail account. Um, in 2019, Google actually um, took that away from for personal accounts. And so now Google Plus is limited to those organizations um, with paid accounts or education accounts because teachers really do use this tool. Um, and so this is one I used to come in here and find things with it reminded me of Pinterest. I could connect with other educators or others, but now it is limited. Um, so at the top, I can turn this on to limit to Fayette County or leave it open. So you'll notice in Fayette County, we have several um, Google Plus communities that exist. For example, there's one for each of the wonders grade levels. There are also a lot of math, um, math communities in here as well. Um, Literacy, here's one for Tights Creek Elementary. Um, the one I wanted that I have on your practice task for you is to locate and join the FCPS um, Google or G Suite Academy. And you can see what it looks like right here. It's FCPS G Suite, and we have 213 members. So inside of this community, I want to show you what it looks like. So rather than just send out a, an email to um, STCs or to the entire district, I could come in here and type um, questions I have for this topic and the people could answer me. For example, um, I can see someone was asking a question about a text reader app um, that reads PDFs. So they asked the question and then the members could come in and answer it. And so anybody in that community could see it. You can add attachments. So you can see here's an attachment or a, an external link. Um, and so it's just a way to share and to organize information. So this is the one that I have on um, your practice task for you. If I wanted to add a question to this, I would come down and just click on this little pencil and I could ask my question or start a discussion. You'll notice I could add a picture, a link, um, I could add a poll. And I could also add documentation from my Google Drive. 
So this is a tool, like I said, I use it as a teacher. We cannot use it with our students. Um, anybody have any inspiration? If this were allowed um, for our students, how could you use this with your students? Either one of these tools. So Google Plus or Groups, how could you use this with your students? If we only could. Anybody wanna unmute their microphones or type it in the chat box? I would love to hear your ideas. Homework help, absolutely. Yeah, book discussions, great. I have seen this used for literature circles or um, when I was in the library and had a battle of the books group, we had we did have a community where students could come in and um, I would I would have ask a question and they could answer. So it was a good way to study and to um, to just keep going over the books over and over. Any other ideas how you could use this with the students? Okay, what about teachers? How could you use this? Either Google Groups or the Google Plus communities to um, collaborate with teachers. Idea sharing, absolutely. Resource sharing, yeah. So I, I, this is. I know I'm asking questions that you um, could possibly see more about um, <laughs> as you continue on this journey. But uh, the, the different communities I'm members of are even outside of Fayette County. For example, here's one just about Chromebook, um, using Chromebooks in the classroom, and there are over 12,000 members. So if I have a question about using Chromebooks and I need a broader answer, maybe no one in my district knows, um, I could come in and ask this on a wider scale as well. So you can tell that I'm, I'm actually, um, this community has members from all over the world and school, different schools, private schools, public schools. So it's really neat to get different ideas from people and to share resources as well. Okay, um, so for level one, for Google um, communities, or Google Plus communities, the tools you would, you know, we ask skills for level one would be how to use Google Plus. Um, not necessarily how to create one, but how to go in, how to search for communities, and um, just how to, to interact with each other, read posts, and share posts with each other. So for your practice task for Google Plus, I do have um, for you to open up Google Plus, find that, search for, and join the FCPS G Suite group. And just to browse what's there and um, while you're there there feel free to come up and search for other groups that you might want to join um, because this, this is a way to develop and extend your PLN your professional learning network um, to connect with educators and to share and I think we have all gotten very proficient at this during um, these crazy NTI times how to share online and the, resource, um, the resources can be overwhelming, but by finding them in a place like this, they're here when you need them. So I do like the idea of using Google Plus for that. Okay, any other questions? Over Google Groups or Google Plus? Okay. Great, well, we'll go ahead and stop for today. Um, again, I, I know today was just a quick session um, about how to use either of these tools with um, students if we lived in a perfect Google world. So again, these are blocked for our students, but I hope that you can find a way to use them professionally as well. Um, don't forget to join us. We have um, a couple other sessions coming up this week, as well as our um, Path to Certification wrap up on Thursday. So. We are here in any way we can help. <laughs> Thanks for joining in.